Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. My voice is a bit croaky today. My voice is croaky for some reason. I think I might need a drink of water or something, but I'm going to just continue anyway, because I'm hiding from Andre. So I hope he's asleep and I want him to not disturb me. So I'm in the bedroom and I forgot to bring a drink in here. And none of that's really relevant to the recording, but there you go. Uh, Did I say only listen when you can safely close your eyes? Thank you for your support. All the recordings on this podcast are available on my website there are no longer any uh, adverts at all on any of my podcasts and so that uh, that's it I'm going to do a technique today I'm going to it's going to involve I don't know how to explain this. So let's say you've got an emotion. Anxiety. Stressful. Feeling. And. The first thing is to be able to get in touch with it. In order to test. How it changes. So. You don't have to pick, you don't have to do anything, but you don't don't need to pick something like huge. But ideally something that's uh, strong enough to merit changing, that, you know, requires your attention or demand your attention, perhaps, when you don't want it to. So it can, it's a feeling, ultimately. But it can be connected, of course, to something. So maybe this anxiety is connected to um, going out, perhaps. Or it could be anything. I'll let you decide what it is, because it's your life. And we've all got different things that affect us. There's some things that affect lots of people. Uh, At the moment, there's a worldwide pandemic thing going on that's affecting most people in the world. There's lots of people that are just ignoring it and continuing around with their life. But whatever is going on with you, just pick one thing. So I'd like you to think about that thing. It might be something you're worried about, something that you're... um, Yeah, let's say something that you're concerned about, something you're worried about and you're anxious about it. Something that you're going to be doing in the future, something that you have done, or whatever, whatever it is. And think about that thing. Notice where you feel it in your body. Notice what level... What level of um, anxiety level you'd give it? Zero being nothing, ten being the worst it could be. Maybe it's even higher than ten. Maybe it's, you know, beyond the limit of ten. Maybe it's plus twenty-five, you know. It could be whatever it is on your scale. We've all got different scales, haven't we, about what, what something is. So whatever it is, just keep a track of that in your mind. So let's say, for example, it's a six. And the idea of this recording, and pretty much everything I do really, is to reduce stress levels. Even the recordings that aren't on this podcast. 
the let me bore you to sleep ones, that's about reducing stress levels. The deep sleep whisper, reducing stress levels and anxiety. The weak sleep hypnosis weekly, reducing stress levels. Even the chronic pain relief sessions, it's about reducing stress and anxiety levels. Everything I'm going to do is about that. It's just this one's actually got that title in the podcast. So, whatever number it was, just keep a track of that number. I mean, if you want, you can write it down. You don't have to have your eyes closed all the way through this. It's, um, you don't have to lie down on your bed. You can do this sitting in a chair. Make sure that the chair supports your body in case you did fall asleep. Even though this isn't a sleep recording. And it's not even going to be a long recording. It's, I said that a few times and ended up doing an hour. But it's definitely not going to be a long, long recording. So I want you to see that where that is in your body. Feel it where it is. Just notice how it feels. And I know it's an emotion. But we do feel emotions in our body. You may feel it in your head. It might be... Like an all over body sensation. You might feel it in your chest, in your stomach, in your mouth, in your jaw, in your hands, your eyes... It could be anywhere that you might feel it, but it might be an overall sense, like it's almost cloaking you, like it's covering your whole body, like your skin. So you could say you feel it in your skin. If it covers your whole body, the only thing that does that is your skin. So just being aware of how it feels. And I know it's uncomfortable. Temporary discomfort. But at the same time, it's hard to keep it. So I want you to focus on it. And I want you to try and keep that feeling going. Just try and keep it going. So if it's a seven, try and keep it at a seven. But really try, put energy in, put energy into it. And it might sound weird. I mean, a lot of things I do sound weird. The idea of trying to feel that when you might be thinking, yeah, but I already feel it. I just told you. I feel it. But just keep trying to feel it. Don't let it, don't let it go. Let, keep it, keep hold of it. See, this is where the, the feeling starts to change. Start trying to hold on to a little octopus. They're wiggly little things. I mean, I've got a little ferret and he's wiggly. It's hard to hold on to him when he wants to get down. He's a very good escape artist. And so are the feelings, which doesn't make sense, does it, when you consider if they're such good escape artists, these anxiety and stress feelings, if they're such good escape artists... Why do they stick around? Weird, isn't it? It's a bit strange. But it's almost like they don't realise they've got that escape ability. They don't realise it's it's not awakened in the feeling until you grab hold of it and try and force it to stay. And it doesn't like it. it. Kind of, you could say it's a little bit like standing up to a bully. But you know, if it, 
you're holding on to it. It doesn't like it because it's used to being, well, it's used to feeling that it's in charge of you. That that emotion, that anxiety, or that, that feeling that we give the word anxiety or stress to. That feeling that we in the past have given power to thinks that it's got that power. Just in the same way as if you give a six-year-old child a superhero costume, that six-year-old child will think that he or she has superpowers. It's a fact. That's what's going to happen. They're going to believe it. So when we give, we're basically giving these emotions a little cape, a little costume. You can actually imagine that now. A little cape, some little underpants over some tights. Maybe a little mask. Holding a, a violin for some reason. No, it's random. Violin playing superhero. Now that would be something I'd watch. So you're holding on to it. But it doesn't like it. It doesn't like being held on to. Because it doesn't have... It doesn't have the power it thought it had. And you realise it doesn't have the power you thought it had. Because this thing can't get away from you. It's not strong enough. So this thing that's been causing the discomfort level that we looked at earlier in the recording, maybe it was a seven or six, maybe higher. The strength has gone out of it. It was a fake all along. I saw someone on YouTube, and it was a boxer, and it, was, it wasn't, you know, it was like a celebrity in Italy or something, and he had fake muscles. He had basically had implants in his arms and his chest and his back and his bum and his leg. He just implanted so it wasn't proper muscles. It's the funniest thing I think I've ever seen ever. It didn't make him strong. He looked strong, but he wasn't. So you've got this thing that you're holding on to, and you literally don't have to put any energy into holding it. You could, you could pick it up by the scruff of it and its neck with two fingers. A little bit like, I don't know if you remember Scrappy-Doo from the Scooby-Doo cartoons. Let me at him, let me at him. It didn't, you know, couldn't do anything. Tiny little thing. But it didn't realise that it couldn't do anything. Now this little thing realises that it doesn't have any power over you. It's just this little... It's nothing. It's just a feeling. Almost like a shriveled up shoe. A bit like the, you know, in the Wizard of Oz, the, the, the house falls on the, the witch and this shoe just shrivels up. Or well, the foot shrivels up, it's a bit like that. Like an old sock. Very miniature. And you look at it, it's like, oh. How could that feeling have ever had any effect? 
So you could go two ways with this. You could go like, oh, well, have a go at yourself. Or why did I allow myself to be affected by this? No, that's not the way to go. We need kindness. We need gentleness. A bit of generosity towards yourself. A bit of understanding, a bit of compassion towards yourself. When I say a bit, I mean everything you've got. All the love that you have, shine it towards yourself. And you can shine that compassion, at that emotion as well. Because when you shine it at you, at yourself, it causes healing. But when you shine it at negativity, when you shine it it also causes healing, but that healing disintegrates negativity. It eliminates it. It just evaporates it. it just vanishes. So I want you to think back to that thing again that I had that emotion. And uh, notice what number is that now? That thing that was stressing you out or causing anxiety before. If there is anything left, grab hold of it again. Notice where it is in your body. Just imagine grabbing it, holding on to it. Don't let it go. But this time, what you're going to do is you can imagine just having it in your hand, open your hand up and shine in from your eyes that healing positivity and kindness and compassion directly at it and watch what happens to it as you fill it with healing compassion. Healing compassion. Just watch it evaporate. Disappear. And notice how you feel different. And then again, get back into that feeling again. Think back to exactly the same situation. The thing that caused you the anxiety, stress before. And notice what level it is on that scale of 0 to 10. If it's still there, lower down. Notice where it is now. It's going to be a lot weaker. It was weak to start with. You just didn't realize it. But you notice, so you know, find it. Like, okay. Kind of harder to find when it's so weak. But eventually, you can find it. And you can just imagine it's in your hands. But this time, you haven't got to look at it. Because your hands are already full of that healing compassion. And you can imagine there's a nice bright light inside your hands, almost buzzing away, healing, compassion, filling what's left of that feeling that was there before we started this recording. And you can just rub your hands together. on forever and my suggestion is just keep doing this test it out on different feelings and just keep repeating Let me know how you get on. And what you may notice, because, you know, with feelings and emotions and stuff, they tend to be a bit uh, sheepy in a sense of following each other. So you may find that you get one feeling 
another one, you know, you have it in your hand and you'll notice that more trying to get into your hand as well. But even though you think, oh, there's lots, they're just so weak. They never had the strength to start with. They thought that they were strong because you thought they were strong. But actually, like that six-year-old with the cape and the superhero outfit, thinking that he can fly and he's got super strength, super powers, can see through walls, jump over buildings. He's just a little six-year-old boy. You can rub your hands together. I feel so relaxed and calm. And I actually feel it in the back of my head, right at the back, below my crown of my head. There's a sense of well being sense of calmness. It's nice. I like it. Yeah, feels nice. So that is the end of this recording. So I told you it's a nice short one. It's still 22 minutes long, but it's, uh, for me, short. It's never going to be much less than 20 minutes. So I hope this has been useful. And remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.